So now that I've made my little dummy load with an RF sniffer on it, um, I want to use the instruments that I have. So the first thing we're going to do is um, see how good it is, make sure my load is okay. So I'm going to use my Nano VNA to check my load. And then once the load checks out, then we'll use the load with the uh, Tiny SA using the sniffer port and we'll transmit into the load and see if everything looks good. So let me, uh, let me get things set up so I can get a good camera angle. I know people like to see the um, display nice and crisp, so let me do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is check the calibration of the Nano VNA to make sure it's good. And so I always like to do that. So I'm going to put a cable onto channel zero, and I'm using some good cables. I have some uh, uh, aviation cables here that were surplus, but they have got really nice uh, USA connectors on them and stuff like that. So anyway, so let's. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to check my little uh, female load, see how that measures. I'm sweeping between uh, what 10 kilohertz and one gigahertz, so. Uh, so I'm showing two displays. I'm showing return loss, which is the yellow trace, and I'm showing the Smith chart. So everything looks perfect on uh, on that. So the next thing I'm going to test is um, a uh, calibration load that I have. Now this is the most accurate thing I have. Uh, it's 50 ohms up to gate 18 gigahertz. It's a really, really nice load, and I've swept it myself on my friend's VNA up to uh, 20 gigahertz, and it's just great. So let's uh, let's put it on. I have a little female adapter so I can use it. So you can see it's nice and smooth and very good and almost perfect at 50 ohms. So the calibration, look, calibration looks very, very good. All right, so now we're going to test the load. So I'm gonna go into the load port. And so my load should look like 50 ohms also. And so we see that we might have a little bit of problem um, it looks great here at a gigahertz and it continues to be really, really good out to here. It does seem to have some resonance or something right around here, then it gets great again. So if we use the, uh, use the marker, let's see, 20 dB is, is great for return loss and that's measuring 70 megahertz. And then it kind of peaks, uh, peaks at minus 13 and then it goes back down at a hundred megahertz. So I'm never going to use any of those frequencies um, in, for transmitting. So for dummy load, I think it's it's really good and the Smith chart looks fine. So we can go ahead and use it. So now that we've tested it, uh, let's go ahead and disconnect it from the from the Nano. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is put a connector on the low input. And that connector we will hook up, we will hook this up to the RF sniffer. Okay, so that's going to go into the RF sniffer. Or tap or whatever you want to call it. It's that little tiny little piece of wire that's not connected to anything. It just picks up stray RF. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our radio and remove the antenna. And uh, the Baofeng uses the inverse. It uses a, uh, a male connector on the radio. So we're gonna put a female to female adapter on it. So now we have a, uh, a female here and we can connect uh, the dummy load uh, to the radio. So I'm doing that now. So I'll show this uh, in a different camera angle, but I have the radio going into the dummy load and then the uh, tap or RF sniffer port going into the uh, tiny SA. So I'm gonna turn the radio on. I'm gonna transmit on a simplex frequency and let's see if we get a carrier. Ooh, well, there we go. We get a carrier minus 12 dBm. Okay, sounds great. Uh, so let's go to the 10 meter handband so we'll go frequency start 144 megahertz. Do stop 148 megahertz. That's, that is the 10 meter band. And then we will transmit there and boom. Now there's a whole bunch of uh, what I call phase noise. 
and that's probably due to this auto attenuator, which I don't like. Um, so I'm going to set the attenuator, internal attenuator, level, attenuate, manual, 30. I'm going to set it to 30, which is minus 30. Um, and there we go. So we'll get a clean looking, clean looking signal. Let's go to frequency center. Let's do 146.52 megahertz. See if we're in the middle. There we go. And then let's do a span of 80 kilohertz. Kilohertz. Okay, so it's sweeping quite slow. And um, so if we want to speed that up, we go to display, sweep settings. There's normal, precise, and fast. If we click on fast, now this thing's updating, updating very quickly, which is really nice. So fast is good. And then let me let me bang on the on the radios. And so you can see there is some modulation there. We're starting to see uh, modulation occur. So yeah, everything's working pretty good. And we are measuring, what is our peak measuring now? Well, now it's measuring minus 10 dB. I'm not sure if I, depends on bandwidths and stuff, whether you're measuring things correctly or not. So this is minus 10 dBm. It is power under the curve. So if we set the, um, uh, is it under display? No, it's under level. It's under, <laughs> it's under where? I forget now, frequency? Yeah, frequency, uh, resolution bandwidth. So let's, let's change the resolution bandwidth manually. So this is three kilohertz, we're measuring minus 10. And then let's do a resolution bandwidth of 30 kilohertz. That should include everything. And minus 10.7. Uh, and then let's do a resolution bandwidth. Let's change the frequency span. Let's go to one megahertz. Minus 11. And Let's do a resolution bandwidth of 100 kilohertz, minus 10, okay. And then let's do a uh, display sweep precise. Yeah, so they're all measuring about the same, minus 10 dBm. Like I say, that particular um, tap port is not very important in um, measuring absolute power because it's not calibrated any frequency and stuff. I suppose you could sweep it. I don't think I trust it. I think it's mostly to make sure that your modulation is okay. Okay, make sure your carrier is okay. Make sure you don't have any spurious emissions. Let's check for spurious emissions. Let's do a... Um, Okay, we're going to do a, uh, let's see here, let's play, sweep, we're going to do a normal sweep, and we're going to go back to do a, um, level attenuator auto. Okay, and then let's do the level, oops, level, oops, no, it's a frequency resolution bandwidth auto. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what it likes to do. We'll let it do what it thinks it wants to do. Now we're going to do a start frequency. Uh, we're at 150, 146, so let's do 145 megahertz. Um, did I do? Yeah, 145 megahertz. And let's do a stop of 500 megahertz. Let's see if there's any. Seems like there's a little. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's real. Let's go ahead and measure that. Let's go to uh, markers, search. Uh, 
for max right. And there it is at 293 at minus 55. So about 45 dB lower than the center carrier. So I'd say it's probably within spec. Probably minus 40 is the spec. Yeah, looks good. Anyway, um, let me pan out a bit. All right, uh, so that's going and taking the uh, tap off of that, and then it's going into the radio. So again, the radio goes into the dummy load, and the dummy load has a tap in it that goes to the spectrum analyzer. So um, there you go.